Fox News alert, amid the death and all the destruction, a story of heroism. 13 Ukrainian border guards defending a small island in the Black Sea defy an invading Russian warship. Todd Pyro is here now with the details on the defiance that cost them ultimately their lives. Todd? That's right, Steve Ainsley and Will. The ultimate act of defiance, the ultimate price paid. Ukrainian border guards defending a Black Sea island, defiantly telling an invading Russian warship to go F yourself when asked to surrender, and then killed when that warship opened fire. Watch. <laughs> Obviously, that exchange happening in Russian. Let me summarize. The 13 guards were on Snake Island off Ukraine's southeastern border. The Russians identifying themselves as a Russian warship, demanding that the Ukrainians surrender or else they would open fire. You then hear one of the Ukrainian guards say, this is it. Then asking, should I tell him to go F himself? Another guard responding, just in case. The guard then turns up his volume and bluntly responds, Russian warship, go F yourself. The Russians then reportedly bombarded the island, killing all the guards. This is a screen, screen grab from a video apparently taken by one of the guards killed in the attack. The video appearing to show the guard yelling and hitting the ground as loud fire erupts. President Zelensky said the 13 guards will receive a posthumous Hero of Ukraine medal for heroically defending that island. Back to you. Thank you very much. We Tom. lost 13 defending our country in Afghanistan, and Ukraine has lost 13 of theirs defending their land. Well, it, it, the whole country is banding together. I mean, right now, uh, yesterday, 1,000 volunteers stepped up and volunteered in Ukraine uh, to defend the country. You know, a conscription of fighting age men. Uh, what they're doing is, first of all, they're taking, and obviously the folks there on Snake Island that you're looking at, which is 43 acre island, uh, they were all already in the military. But of, of the volunteers, they're taking the ones who have served previously before uh, in Ukrainian armed services because, for the most part, the country is under martial law. And as we heard Steve Harrigan say earlier, no man between the ages of 18 and 60 is allowed to leave, although they are arming anybody who wants to take up a gun. I mean, you can be younger than 18, you can be older than 60. They want to defend their nation. Let's bring in Geraldo Rivera, Fox News correspondent at large. Geraldo, good morning to you. Hey, Will. The conversation that we've had... Steve. Uh, with many on the ground, Steve Harrigan, uh, Mike Tobin, uh, you and I spoke about this yesterday, Geraldo, is the resolve of the Ukrainian people, is how passionately, enthusiastically will they defend their country. You see this video, Geraldo, you've seen the translation, by the way, online, you can see it literally translated on your screen. You think this, do you think this moment here is, is symbolic, is it illustrative of the Ukrainian resolve? I certainly hope it, it will be, Will, there is no doubt but this could go into the, the building of the national legend. This could be Ukraine's Alamo. Uh, you know, this could be Leonidas uh, and the Sparta standing against Xerxes. This, uh, what you want is you want that heroism. You want people stepping up to defend their nation. You don't want them to be Kabul and Kandahar, the Afghan government running before even the first shot rings out uh, in the capital city of Afghanistan. That was so pathetic to watch that Afghan army run. Here you're seeing the opposite. Here you're seeing men and women digging in, standing their ground. That Snake Island uh, encounter, uh, if it is as reported, will go down in history. The history of a new Ukraine. The, the, uh, the army of Vladimir Putin, the vastly superior army of the Russians, will now not only have to fight against the Ukrainian uh, soldiers that are dug in, they'll have to fight against the memory of the 13 slaughtered Ukrainians who said to the Russians, go F yourself. That's the kind of spirit I, I was looking for. I am enormously uh, gratified to see it. Get this and understand this. Nobody is coming to help the Ukrainians. Right. For all of the platitudes, for everyone saying, bravo, Ukraine, they're on their own against one of the most powerful militaries the world has ever seen. And so far, all I can say uh, from a distance, I believe me, I wish I was there, but from a distance, all I can say is they are standing their ground. Their capital city st stands intact. Their president is still free. He is still speaking to the Ukrainian people, rallying the people. I see no signs of panic. You want the civilians out anyway. Uh, they shot down a Russian jet. I think that uh, 
Putin may have bitten off more than he could chew. Uh, Will Stephen Ainsley. Geraldo, there are a lot of people that are against this, uh, not only Americans, but all over the world. In Tokyo, in Paris, in London, in Berlin, there were people that were protesting. And yesterday in New York, there is the Russian embassy up in your old neighborhood, Geraldo, a few blocks from where you used to live. Uh, 91st Street was blocked off. There were thousands of people out there, or hundreds, I should say. I don't know about a thousand, but they, they started in Times Square. They worked their way up to the Upper East Side, and they were blocking off streets. and, and and holding hands and holding this long flag that took up the whole city block and they were saying their national anthem singing their national anthem they were draped in the ukrainian flags these protests are going on all over the world and in russia there are protesters that are anti-war protesters and putin and his officers have arrested more than 1700 of them and there's there's a possibility they could be charged with treason because they have warned the government has warned any negative comments would be treated as treason your thoughts Ainsley, I've seen plenty of little demonstrations in front of that consulate, the Russian consulate on 91st Street. My daughters did go to school right across the street, but there was nothing of the scale of what is happening now. This is uh, an upswelling of, of support from the Russian people themselves, particularly young Russians who look to their president, look to their government and say, why are we this massive, mighty country attacking Ukraine? Why are we doing this? And hundreds, hundreds of them are putting their, uh, their, their, their backsides on the line. They're getting arrested uh, in Moscow. It's not like being arrested in New York. You get a slap on the wrist. This is Moscow where, as you said, Ainsley, they could be charged with treason. And yet they are defying their own government and saying to President Putin, this does not, this is not what Russia stands for. They are they're putting themselves on the line. Hundreds are being arrested. And I think that this this could represent, you know, a timeline for Putin. He can't stay forever if his own people are restive and demonstrating. So I think this is a very, very significant development, Ainsley. I think you're right. Uh, you know, you know, he miscalculated. He thought the people at home in Russia would say, hey, that's a good idea. Let's let's grow the. Uh, Russia bigger to the, you know, the way it was back in the olden days. We like that. But uh, clearly, Geraldo, it shows how out of touch he is with his own people. And then he miscalculated the reception the Russian troops would receive in Ukraine. When they started rolling in, Putin thought the Ukrainians would say, hey, yay, the Russians are here to liberate us. They got exactly a 180 from that. They, instead, they, they're finding uh, Ukrainians with Molotov cocktails and Kalashnikovs. Absolutely, Steve. And they're blowing bridges and they're shooting down Russian aircraft. If Putin thought this would be over in 48, 72 hours, he severely miscalculated. Uh, you heard one of the uh, speakers say that Ukraine is the size of France or the size of Texas. Uh, you know, it is, it is, and I've heard General Keane say it and other military analysts say it. It could be that Putin woefully underestimated the force that it would take, and he grotesquely underestimated the Ukraine national spirit. He thought they'd say, ah, we speak uh, sort of the same language. Uh, we pray to the same God, uh, uh, okay, Putin, come on in, take us over. Uh, this is not the days, though, Steve, of the Cossacks. This is not the day when the Tsar's secret police can go and, uh, and impose. <laughs>
रात सपना देखाया पिया हमका रात सपना देखा 